Okay, so this is this uh, PBQ we're approaching for the first time like normal. Uh, I haven't done this one in a while. I don't know if I've ever done this one actually. You implement secure script environments. Uh, so let's see, this is gonna be, I'm assuming we're protecting against scripts or this is gonna be some sort of attack vector, but let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario. Let's see. Oh, hey, thanks for joining in. I appreciate you, you watching the stream here. Okay, let's see the scenario. You're the chief security analyst for your company. While examining web server logs, you notice a few hypertext transfer protocol get requests that look suspicious. You need to examine the strings to investigate the activity. Also part of your investigation include the type of attacks, attribution of the attacks, evidence for your conclusions, and potentially, potentially recommendations for future protection against similar activity. Okay, and potentially, comma, recommendations for future protections against similar activity. All right, so not a very helpful scenario, I don't think. It does tell us that we have some GET requests, so we're doing some sort of packet sniffing, probably using Wireshark. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so we have two timestamps and two requests. These are GET. The timestamps are both 2019, about the same time. Okay, so one after another. So this is probably uh, related or maybe done by the same person. But let's take a look at this get uh, this you are or this URL here search index PHP. Okay, that's unusual page name equal user in. Okay, so this right here is a get request that's not I don't think something we would normally see like a normal get request. This is probably indicative of some sort of attack. And then we have a host 198.134.5.6 using Mozilla and Firefox 5.0 iPhone. And this is most likely detecting this operating system as an iPhone with OS 5.1. And we're since 2019, we're much more advanced than that. Okay, and then the next get request we have get partners index a PHP page. Okay, now when you see something like 2% F, okay, that indicates, that's a representation of a character that wouldn't be uh, normally accepted as a, as a character if you're writing a URL. So if you write things like the plus sign, the plus sign is not accepted as a character. You can't put a plus sign in a URL, so you'd represent that by a percentage sign and then a couple of things. I think that is a period, I believe. Uh, let's double check that. I, I mean, you're not gonna be able to check this during the test. We'll go after that later. But I do want to explain that after we're done here. Okay. Okay, etc 2f password HTTP. So okay, so this one, this is looking like it's trying to retrieve some sort of file from the etc the password folder in a Linux operating system. Okay host is dot dot slash dot dot slash slash etc password so it's trying okay i think this would be this looks like a directory traversal attack to me but we'll see what the options are and again the same user agent mozilla 5.0 iphone okay what type of attack is depicted here okay so we are looking at what type of attack this is and let's see what the choices are for the first one i would wager this is some sort of injection attack so let's see what we have. Cross-site request forgery, directory traversal, SQL injection, XML injection, or cross-site scripting. Now this looks like, I would say, uh, SQL injection. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and pick there. Okay, and then we have our request here. This would be a directory traversal, I think. It, the key indicators of that, it's looking at the etc, the, the password folder, the passwd folder in slash uh, etc. So this would be oftentimes in the shadow directory for a Linux operating system, but I think that's, that's pretty clearly a directory traversal attack. And you can see how it's trying to uh, traverse the different directories to get to that folder where the passwords are stored. 
Right, could these attacks be from the same actor? I think so. I think they probably are from the same actor. And I think because of that, you know, the timestamps are very close to one another and we see the user agent using the same browser, Firefox, and the same device. So, yes. All right, and then what controls on the web server will prevent these types of attacks from being successful? What do we have? Anti-malware, inbound port 81 deny. That's a strange one. Input validation, logging enabled. Okay, well, if these are, I mean, these are get requests. So we want to make sure that we're filtering our requests and we're, um, we're ensuring that we only have proper inputs. So I think input validation makes the most sense. Because if we accept anything as an input, we accept these as commands and they're interpreted by our system as commands, then you know that's going to allow this hacker to execute this, um, this type of script on our, our device. Okay, if there's not too much trouble, do SQL injections primarily deal with PHP? That's a great question. Not necessarily, but PHP is very susceptible to SQL injections. And that's one of the indicators here of, um, of why this would, I think this would be a SQL injection. So let's see. So for instance, I'm looking for example of a log and I see PHP, could I properly assume it's SQL injection? Normally for this exam, I think that's a safe assumption. Now, not always, but that's a pretty good indicator. And a lot of SQL injection attacks target PHP specifically. So that's really good. Yeah, and to protect from SQL injection would be input validation. Really great point there. Exactly. Uh, great questions. All right, what controls on the web server will prevent these types of attacks from being successful? Input validation. What pieces of evidence point to the nature of the traffic's origin? So we're just talking about the traffic's origin. Select all that apply. I'm not sure. Traffic date and timestamp. You can make the argument that that does or doesn't. Depends on how specific you want to be. I'm going to go ahead and say that it does because these attacks both occurred at about the same time. That shows that we could probably assume that these are made by the same person. But at the same time, that doesn't really tell us who did the attack. So... This is that's a strange one. All right, HTTP 1.1. I don't really think that that has anything to do with the nature of the origin. Uh, the attack attempt type. I don't think that has anything to do uh, with the nature of the origin and the user agent string. This one I think is the most likely. I kind of either want to select none of these and user agent string only or also include traffic date timestamp. The user agent string is the same for both. And that does help us determine that this is. So if I'm selecting user agent string, I probably should select traffic date and timestamp or it could be none of them. But I think, you know, this one tells us that these two are done by the same person. These two as well. Um, the HTTP 1.1, any of the requests on this web server should be that version. So I don't think that has any indication or is not going to narrow it down for us. And the attack attempt type doesn't really help us determine the origin. I think I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, any questions? Any questions on this? Okay, let's go ahead and try this. Let's see how we're doing. Okay, okay, good. All right, uh, let's see what they have to say. So we did it right. So let's see if we did it right for the right reasons. <laughs> Sometimes you do it right and you, your thinking was completely wrong. All right, with the first attempt, attack attempt, the clue that leads to a security analyst to believe it's SQL injection is the use of the percent two, two zero, yeah, right there, in the get request string, okay? However, in the second attack attempt, the attacker is clearly trying to reach the ETC password directory through the use of relative addressing, which is this right here. Okay. Now here, percent two zero, I got to refresh myself on what these represent. I'm pretty sure that's apostrophe. All right. And so with the second attack attempts, bypass the ETC or 
trying to reach the etc password directory that's pretty clear with the request through relative addressing bypassing the web page and attempting game access to the operating system while this may sound ineffective in today's world oh it's very effective in today's world <laughs> happens a lot uh, one must remember that machines are configured by people and okay great and that means that somewhere out there there is a misconfiguration way to be exploited yeah and remember a lot of these attacks are done by bots so attackers will they will use these bots or botnets to perform attacks on pretty much any website they can get a the hold of, send these requests out. They only need one or two successes out of a couple hundred thousand, and they're going to be successful. You know, then they can compromise those websites. So the hackers are playing the numbers games. All right, two pieces of evidence lead the analyst to believe that this activity might have come from the same actor or device. The date timestamp of both pieces of traffic were in short succession. And the user agent string was the same. Okay, so th that they're using that type of logic. Though I could argue it the other way too, but I, I could see where they're coming from. Well, this isn't exactly a smoking gun to an attacker. It's a path that analysts could use to lead to potential attribution. All right, fair enough. Both these attacks can be prevented with robust input validation in place on the web server. When SQL injections and directory traversal occur, it is due to poor input validation on the web server misconfigurations. All right, pretty good. Now let's go ahead and check what these mean, uh, I'm gonna double check these because uh, 2F web input. Here we go, all right, URL and coding references. This is what we're looking for. All right, so we had percent %2F, I believe. Let's double check that. Uh, percent two F. Let's go ahead and search this. Percent two F. That's a slash. That makes sense. And then we had percent two zero. Let's double check that. Percent two zero. Uh, yeah, that's a space. Okay. That's a space. Now this is a hexadecimal encoding. So if you know your hexadecimal off the top of your head, you can do it this way. Um, and uh, you know, you, we should be able to do that, but I just wanna make sure we're doing that correctly. So this is a space. Oh no, we have the apostrophes here. Okay, so this is one of the key indicators, and I didn't clue in on this right now, uh, but we do have two apostrophes, okay? So we do have two apostrophes, and that's usually a clear indication of SQL injection. And then we have the percent two zero is in that when put into a URL is going to show up or be interpreted as a space. Okay, so we just that's URL encoding for a space. We do percent or we do apostrophe space apostrophe. So the attacker is trying to get basically any type of value there within those two you know, by doing those apostrophes in the space. So that makes a lot of sense. At percent two f, those are slashes forward slashes. So that's why we're seeing that. So we have C dot dot percent two F dot dot percent two F dot dot percent two F dots are acceptable. They're interpreted as they are. And then the slash, the forward slash, as you see here, that's represented by percent two F. And I, I mean, it's pretty clear when you look at it right here. But if you do, you know, if you can't quite remember your hexadecimal, uh, it, just look it up. <laughs> no one's on your job is going to expect you to remember that. You know, you always look it up if you need to. It's not, that's half of cybersecurity sometimes is looking up uh, answers to problems. But yeah, I think this one pre pretty well. And you guys have any questions? Any questions on the, the PBQ questions on the question? Okay, great job. That was fantastic. Really well done, everyone.